you know, Gary, sometimes I come here, look out the window, think about all the technological marvels that are going on out there in the world today. DNA sequencing, ionic propulsions, artificial intelligence, blockchain technologies and such. And then there's me in 2022, banging bits of metal with a hammer. Right, Biomat channel. Today we are making, no gas in it. We're making a new case for Zippo lighter. I've got this Zippo insert, proper Zippo insert, but the case is just a cheap one. Just I needed one to use this. So I bought a cheap one from a market in Spain, I believe. Uh, it was all brightly plated. So I um, filed off all the plating and then burnt it. Tested out some chassis coating on the side there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically it's just a messed up old thing. Quite bad quality, it's got a wobbly hinge and stuff. So uh, I want to start using this lighter again, but I want it to look nice. So I thought it'd be fun to actually try and make a case for it. So this video might even double as a guide for people looking to make a box, because that's essentially what we're doing, just a box. That's the way I see it, it's the box, cutting it, cutting it in half and then putting a hinge on it. Um, yeah, simple as that. So we will get into it as soon as I said thank you to these new patrons. Um, we've got Patrick, Alexi Hunt, Mark Adams, and Andy Cates. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, really appreciate you becoming patrons, as always. Thank you to all the patrons. Uh, patronship, if you don't know, it's like a kind of a membership, monthly membership, but there's no contract. You can just come and go. You can do a custom pledge, whatever you want. But it just enables people to help out creators of uh, usually artists or designers kind of people if they're putting information out, content out, which helps you learn and gain the skill which they have, um, you can just, as a mark of gratitude, just send them a little bit of money. So that's all patronship is. Um, yeah, link in the description if you want to help me out yourself. And uh, yeah, you get a shout out on the channel, next video after you join, and uh, you get access to all the new YouTube videos two weeks before they go live on YouTube. And you get access to all the full instructional guides. So I make jewelry making instructional guides, like good one hour, between one hour and two hours usually very in-depth, showing everything in great detail, explanations. I'll talk about what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, alternative ways of doing it, where, <laughs> while I'm doing it. Um, yeah, just a lot of information I put into these videos and show everything clearly what I'm doing. So I just want to share what I've learned over the years and enable other people to do the same. Uh, right, cool, let's get into this Zippo video. All right, starting this video, slightly disheartened, yeah, because check it out, I've already done it. I've already made this video months ago. Uh, I got to this stage, I had this like th quite thick sheet of copper. Um, I got to this stage and it got to like closing it up and then trying to solder it and I was trying to try and like couldn't get it hot enough even with easy solder, trying it with this sort of butane torch. Um, I managed to just, just about tack it shut after like trying for like 10 minutes to solder it and I thought oh, I can't, can't continue like this. So I put this down for like months. Um, I wanted to try again, so I got a thinner sheet of silver, kind of inspired by having that solder paste I had recently, I tried it out. I thought I wouldn't find a use for it for me, but it melted so quickly, I thought with thinner silver and then that solder paste, I reckon I can continue with it. So I'm gonna start again, basically. So this is literally it, I just found it. I didn't know I still had it. But look, you can see the solder on there. It took ages and that's all I managed to do, is get a little bit of solder to flood right on the corner and not even strong. Pathetic. So uh, yeah, flattened it out. And this is great, so I can show you the shape. And I designed it like this on purpose because, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I wanna start with this shape first. So then I can still get inside it if I need to. If, if you cut it out in a way where you're folding up a deep box with a bottom, you can't really get in there easily with tools. So going through the job in my, my mind of thinking ahead, I thought this was like the most sensible way to actually create the box. So that's kind of handy, I guess. I've done this in the past and show you what we're aiming for. So. Yeah, cutting out of the sheet. Just 13 mil on the sides. And then from that line, I measured 36.6. I might as well call it 36.5. I mean, I'm talking about these super accurate measurements. You've actually got to cut it by hand, so you might, the inaccuracies mean a bit as well. And on the measurements I've got here, if 
if you're making one as well, your Zippo lighter might have like different amounts of wear and stuff. It might just be slightly different, made slightly differently, different factory or something. So I should probably not be too concerned with these actual measurements, but uh, for myself, I want to know what works. So just checking out, I said 36 and a half, yeah. So I've got that one, that one, that one. Just, just about scraping by with enough space there. Um, so yeah, cool. Okay, so I marked it out. These are the measurements, 36.4. Uh, 13.1, everything else. Uh, so just so you understand the shape, you've got one, two, three, four. These four sides will fold up like that. And then you've got that folds that way, that folds that way. There's your box. Um, yeah, these measurements are important because that's the fitment. But the actual height, I went for 55 mil. Didn't bother writing that down because that was just what I decided how tall I want it. But the height, if you're actually making something for a Zippo, um, you just need like minimum 52 or something. Uh, just make sure it fits in there and then bear in mind a new flints push this screw down a little bit so you need space for that um yeah so just make sure you've got enough height 55 mil was plenty all right so you just simply cut out all the shapes yeah last time i did this i was getting a bit confused with my lines i drew so this time i've made it really clear with a marker pen that's what i need to cut out what i need to leave so pretty straightforward at this stage usual kind of methods apply just cut don't cut on your line just cut slightly on the long side and then leave it to your file to get it nice and flat and right on the line okay so you cut this out uh we need to put a groove down all these lines because we want a like a guide for our file to go in so we can file nicely um it's a bit difficult with your saw blade to actually get it on that line straight across and also when you put weight on your saw blade it kind of bends so it takes away your ability to cut across a, a large distance a flat flat surface so what i did is i used these grinding discs which i sell i sell them in my online shop link in the description um so yeah this is spinning grinding down that edge you just move it along and uh yeah it's not perfect but we're gonna create a decent ish straight line so the file can sit in and the file will make it perfect we want this nice V shape in there so it folds up into a box and uh, yeah there's nice flat surfaces touching each other which will hopefully solder nicely. So I'm watching myself cut over these lines badly starting to feel silly about being fussy over tenths of a mil <laughs> where it scored the line. <laughs> Score the line perfectly and then just make a mess of it when you cut it out. So when you're going down with a tool, you should come off and then hit that edge because that's going to be V'd off. Yeah, I can show you on this one. Look, because that end piece should end up looking like that. That's half of that V section that chamfers that off. So now you just simply get a square section needle file and then go over all your lines again. All that grinding was to be able to do this nicely in position. And your file should be taking that edge off. I mean, in fact, I might even just, and you may as well go around all of these and get it out of the way with your needle file. Okay, we can do that basically all the way around. We've got to do that. So now that's out of the way. Gives my needle file a bit of space to um, hit that end a bit more. And just go out. And I would file like three quarters of the way through. You can even turn your needle file a little bit, rock it backwards and forwards to make sure it really opens up enough for these sides to fold up at like a right angle. It's quite bad news if you didn't file it enough and you're trying to fold it up. Uh, you end up trying to bend the metal, trying to push it into a nice right angle. So you're better off filing more away than not enough, definitely. And uh, again, this is going to be the inside of the box. So don't worry too much about being super neat. At the same time, you should, you should always try and work kind of well.
So now you just simply get a square section needle file and then go over all your lines again. All that grinding was to be able to do this nicely in position. And your file should be taking that edge off. I mean, in fact, I might even just, and you may as well go around all of these, and get it out of the way with your needle file. Okay, we do that basically all the way around. We've got to do that. So now that's out of the way. Gives my needle file a bit of space to um, hit that end a bit more. And just go out. And I would file like three quarters of the way through. You can even turn your needle file a little bit, rock it backwards and forwards to make sure it really opens up enough for these sides to fold up at like a right angle. It's quite bad news if you didn't file it enough and you're trying to fold it up. Uh, you end up trying to bend the metal, trying to push it into a nice right angle. So you're better off filing more away than not enough, definitely. So I've got these all filed out now, going around the outside, getting all these edges right. You scored these lines, yeah, be careful not to start flexing it about. You want to keep everything flat and straight. I would file these kind of pretty sharp really without going too far all right so this is ready to go scored out just having a close look around the outside um I'll say it again you're better off filing too much like too much of an angle so there's no metal getting in the way stopping you folding things right up uh make sure it's nice flat as well you haven't done it all kind of rounded um yeah i've got this is a new bit of sheet so i've got to take this plastic off and then i will anneal it and then fold it up fold it up and then end up with that be at the same stage so i've just annealed it still hot uh looks like that because i fluxed it in all the grooves before annealing it so it's ready just to fold up it should be good for soldering um feeling nervous because it needs to fold up here and end up like a really nice square shape and the dimensions have to be just so well, that slides in and out with a bit of resistance. Not too much, not too little. Um, it's a shame I can't use this one. <laughs> but do you know what? That silver solder paste melted at such low temperature. I'm going to have another go at soldering this up with that paste. It might, might work. Um, but this one works really well, so it'd be nice if I get the same. But we don't know. Let's try it out. And we need to fold it up here without marking the metal and flexing it about and stuff. So I'm going to use my vise for that. So those end bits, the smaller bits, they stay flat, as it also enables us to do this stage. Oh, let me, uh, that's what I did last time. It will come back to me now. Using my draw plate to uh, push it down. last time to fold this up nicely but we need it to stay folded up I don't want to have to be pushing down on it with any pressure as I heat it up so uh, I remember last time mucking about with the vise and that I can't remember exactly what I did but this time I'm just gonna hold it in my in between two draw plates squeeze that shut and then uh, use my third one to push that shut but basically just using flat surfaces so I'm not bending the uh, sheets around figure it out as you go along. Just anything that works to get it closed up. 
nice and flat. It's closing up, looking at it, it's not perfect. It's perhaps. Oh, it's just I've bent this one down a little bit too much. I'll try to straighten that out, but holding it in there, it's a bit grippy. This is going to be good, I think. It's going to work well. Yeah, I need to bend this one out a little bit. Anyway, so I'm just looking over it and seeing what I've done and seeing how to improve it. But cool. I want, uh, but like I said before, I want it to actually shut up, cat. I want it to actually stay closed, so I can just easily just put it down and solder it. <laughs> right. So my highly poisonous solder paste back in action. Wasn't expecting him to find it a use for it so quickly. No flux. This is the next stage I'm worried about because uh, if I can't even get this hot enough to solder, I've wasted my time again making another video. I'm reasonably confident about it. I still don't really know how best to use this stuff. I'm still a bit scared of it though, for how poisonous it is. Right, just warm this up, hopefully that solders it. soldered badly. I'm going to soak it in the acid and have a close look at it. But it was melting and going in there. It slides in there really well. Actually feels nice. Quite good resistance. So that working really well. That solder paste was good. So I like solder paste. <laughs> Did a U-turn on that. It was useful for me today. But my ends melted quite well, but that center section needs remelting. So I'm going to... And then looking inside it as well. It could do with the bit more flooding through so I'm gonna what you just saw I'm gonna do that again with a little bit more paste just to fill up fill that up properly I can actually use two torches then to get the heat up um, I don't like solder paste again. Look at that. What a mess. Everywhere it goes is just bleh. <laughs> it's horrible stuff. But I got it soldered. So that's going to go in the acid for a good 10 minutes. All right, so I just filed it. Not, not a great join, but it's stuck in that position, so that's good enough. Um, yeah, so that slots in there, fits nicely. I'm thinking how to proceed because this is as far as I've ever got <laughs> doing this job. Um, I'm thinking I may as well just close the ends up and then I'm going to cut it in half, cut the lid off and then solder them up because it's going to, just for the sake of being able to heat it up and get the solder to flow easier, um, it's going to be obviously easier if they're in smaller pieces. So yeah, I'm just going to fold these flat then cut it, then do some more soldering. So I'm hoping I can just do this on my bench without pushing anything out of shape. I'd be ashamed to squash it down and put a dip in it, but to be honest, this was one mil, I think this was one mil sheet. Looks about one mil. Um, yeah, one mil. Feels really solid and strong, really heavy. You could 
definitely get away with going thinner than one mil. Four mil. I suppose I just should start trying to work carefully again doing this. This could be quite a, a long, slow process trying to cut this carefully along this line. I don't want to want to keep it parallel. Obviously, I don't want to shorten it any more than I have to. When you're cutting around a corner, you've got to look in two places. You've got to look where you're cutting, and then you've got to see where the, the other end of the saw blade, what that's doing as well, because you don't want to end up tilting it just so you can literally be following that line perfectly, but the back of it is like cutting, cutting into the edge. You've got to be well careful. I kind of help myself by rocking it backwards and forwards, and it keeps that bottom edge moving up and down where it's meant to. Just hanging on by the last bit. every time i do a job like that like do a lot of filing or cutting it's always nice to put it on your metal block and test it it's not bad look i haven't filed it or nothing look it's still all scratchy from the saw saw blade so that's quite accurate happy with that uh i just need to get this to sit down properly and then i'll solder it up and then do the same this one so we've got the lid section. I have to do quite a lot of hammering to get that down, so I just want to emphasize the point again. When you're filing those chamfered edges, definitely worth your while uh, filing off too much rather than too little. Because um, there was a spot where it's touching, I had to hammer it quite a lot to get it to sit down. It's quite hard work filing over flat surfaces. Got to be a bit careful as well. I can't just push as hard as I want against my peg because I don't want to end up bending it. Although this is actually very strong, but at the same time, I don't want to kink it even slightly. Also, yeah, I want to say this is just a Zippo lighter case for myself to use. It's not something to sell. It's not, I'm not really teaching anyone how to do it. I'm just showing you what I'm doing to create it. Um, so... I'm not going to finish it nicely. I'm just going to leave it all scratched up. I'm, I actually kind of like the finish of it being all filed. Um, might not even paper it. So, yeah, don't expect it to, to finish off a nicely, beautifully polished thing with diamonds all over it. <laughs> that's not what this video is about. There you go. That's what I'm leaving it like, just all filed up. I, I mean, I may, when it's finished and it's like clicking together, hopefully it closes nice and tight, uh, I may go over it with a rough sandpaper just to make it not so file file marky but basically i'm happy to use it like that um yeah having this all it's not going to be polished or nothing but anyway i just want it to work nicely so next step we are doing the hinge i haven't really thought about how i'm going to do that yet so we need to do the hinge and then inside there there's that little piece that's what hooks onto that right so i'm gonna do the hinge yeah i've got this little bit of tube i'm going to use what i'm going to do is sellotape these together and then phrase out a little scoop on the side so that sits in there and then I can solder it to that side and that side and then when it's together uh, it's nice and tight and then it's all nice and secure so but first to, to be able to cut that scoop in a good position I want these staying together so I'm just going to sellotape them If you're doing this you may as well cut right into it as far as you can just as it breaks through put it on there and then that way you've got the maximum amount of surface soldered onto the top and bottom and then also sticks out the least amount as well so uh it's starting to feel old it's just everything every time i do something i haven't done for a while it just feels like such a long time since i last did it and it's because it is <laughs> it literally like 
tens of years. I can't remember the last time I did a, a hinge, so it feels like now I'm having to figure it out for the first time. So anyway, what I'm doing is a three-part hinge. I've got the two outer ones will be soldered to one side and then the middle one will go to the other side. So I've got them, I pulled down this bit of wire, which, which will be the rivet. Sorry, I didn't focus. So I've pulled this down. They are, it just slots in there. That's gonna hold it in position. I'm hoping to be able to just balance it on there like that. I could just hold it in that position and solder that on. Um, yeah, and that's one side done. And then I've got to cut another bit of tube that will fit just inside that. And then, uh, and then solder that on. That's pulled through a little bit. I need to add a bit more, but now I trust that's strong. I'm gonna do the other side while it's fluxed and then uh, soak it in the acid and then try and, try and put a bit more solder on. And uh, I would just like to confirm something that adding marker pen to metal does not stop solder flooding on it. Look at that, they've got a little bit of solder on the bottom. So <laughs> this is now soldered in. Uh, you can sometimes get lucky and give it a twist. Can't force it too much, I don't want to break or move my hinges at all. Sometimes it's just a tiny amount, like when you're soldering two links together, the one after it kind of touches a little bit of solder. Uh, you can get lucky and you can just break them loose. I think that's soldered in properly. Yeah, that's what you get for listening to uh, comments on YouTube. <laughs> Balls. So uh, I'm gonna have to, I mean, I'll show you this, I don't care, I'm not like, there's no ego flex on talking about how good I am at making hinges and boxes and stuff. <laughs> I'm making mistakes, something goes wrong, I'll just show you about it, it's just funny. Um, so I've got to, I'll cut, carefully cut through the middle. I think the other side I can pull out no problem. Uh, and then I have to drill it out. So there's an extra little feature for you on the video <laughs> that I was hoping I wouldn't have to do. Uh, but yeah, marker pen, not reliable. Don't do it. So I just did that second solder. I wanted to show you what I was trying to achieve. I wanted to see solid solder, like flooded right across there and there. No gaps, flooded both sides, that side, that side. So that's as strong as it can be now. I can't keep adding solder because it's just gonna build up. So that's soldered on really well. Soldered on a bit too well because the rivet's now in there. So I've got to drill out this rivet, make a new rivet. Uh, I think one side will get away with, but one side I'm gonna need drilling through and uh, hopefully get it working correctly. It's not a huge deal, not in this moment. Uh, sometimes if you solder two links together on a fancy chain, it's a, a nightmare, it's a big problem. Um, but on this, it's not a big job really. I've just got to carefully cut down the middle, pull one end out, drill out the other one, probably stick a cylinder phrase in there or something, get it nice and neat, and, uh, and then put a new, get a new rivet for it. So that's what I'm doing next. All right, I might, I might do a separate video on this because it might help someone out in the future. If they make a mistake like this, they might run to the internet for advice on how to do it. So I've cut out that middle section. Sure enough, one pulled out easy, one is soldered in. I've uh, cut it off, uh, not right up to the hinge I've put on. Just a little bit sticking out. I am now gonna use a ball phrase to a dip in the end right in the middle on my motorbike yeah I was taking out the alternator and one of the bolts stripped I've got it right here just uh it was turning and it didn't feel right and I was like it was weird and uh just another crank more and then it just came off I was like oh no it's really hidden sort of in the bike past the frame as well it's really difficult to get to so I'm going to be doing a similar job to this on my motorbike I'm literally going to take this down I bought it in because I wanted to practice uh, drilling into it, see if my tools actually cut into that. It did, no problem. So I'm going to be taking <laughs> this drill downstairs and my bike parked up and um, I'm going to put a dip in the middle and then I've got to get a left-handed thread drill. So you spin it what would normally be backwards and it drills into that, what's remaining in my bike. And uh, it grips in, if you're lucky, they grip in and then they actually just unscrew it as you're drilling. If not, uh, more awkward, but... That's what I've got to try. Anyway. Can you hear 
how that sounds. It's different to what I usually have. It's because I'm using this new oil I've discovered. It's not even for jewellery. Um, but I'm using this on my drill and it literally feels smoother. It sounds smoother. Uh, you need less of it. Drills stay sharper longer. It's brilliant stuff. I'm going to start selling it in my online shop. Really good for, for this work. But it's not meant for, it's not even nothing to do with this trade. It's quite, quite good. Ta da! Had to uh, drill it, ball phrased it. I think there's a slice that wants to come out. There it is. Whoop. Hey! <laughs> Alright, okay. That wasn't too bad. I was probably spent 10 minutes doing that. Anyway, right, let's continue with this centre bit. So I've cut this bit of tube. That's going to sit in between them. Just checking the sides are nice and straight and actually fits in there. That just does. So what I'm doing is hoping I can put that in there like that and then <laughs> same as last time I can't get it to sit in there. But basically I'll put that in, in position and uh, hopefully be able to remove those side ones and then that one stays remaining in its position there and that's where it's going to stay until it's soldered there. So I've got that soldered on, that soldered on. I was just uh, tidying up the solder joins with the rubber wheel. Put them together for the first time. Doesn't close up that nice and looking at it, it's just a little lump of solder on the inside of one. So when you're making a hinge, you, it's got to be really clean and clear where everything needs to sit. Otherwise things won't line up properly. But it's not bad, I'll just, uh, I'll just, I mean, literally I'll just sharpen a screwdriver and just <laughs> scratch it out. But you know, if you've got any kind of graver, set engravers, they're good for that kind of thing just scratching away metal um, but yeah there you go sort of looking like a, a lighter now and even though it doesn't line up that well I can still put this metal through so I'm not going to force it open yet if things are not lining up nicely but yeah it works and then very little sideways wobble so my hinge is actually doing its job quite well obviously it's nice if it's just really solid and strong doesn't no side flex at all and with a bit of resistance when it's opening and closing I keep working on it and not filming it. I should have showed you that, but basically I, I took a bit of uh, took a bit of metal away, so that fitted down a bit closer, but partly out of lack of patience. I ended up just putting that on top. Got this hammer, put that on top, and I just banged it down. That improved the fitment of it, but it did increase the wobble. So compared to that one, this one's really bad. I mean, I don't, not difficult to beat a very cheap lighter case. But yeah, this one's really wobbly. Um, so yeah, when you're working on something with a hinge, you've got to sort of check that, make sure it's, it feels nice. It's not like just going really tight there and then you're forcing it open so the metal's not being all stretched about. This one actually works quite nicely. Very little wobble. Unfortunately, the wobble increases the more closed it gets. So it's just doing checks and then obviously I want to make sure actually it's going to work with this inside. So that slides in, it's nice and tight in there. Oh, the sound of quality. Uh, but it won't pull that back again because I need this little bar in there. That's what that job, that's what that does. That's that's job. So I've got to put a little bar in there. And then this is, oh, that sounds so nice. Uh, this is going to be finished, apart from uh, tidying up the surface. So can you see that little L shape there? That was me marking that distance and then marking the height. I've cut this down. This should... Go in there, there you go. Just sits on it. So I've got to get that soldered in and then done, sort of. So I'm just gonna touch, hopefully I can make this work. I'm just gonna touch a bit of solder on top there and there, get it hot, let it flood down. It just, it's just got solder in a little bit. I'm not worried about being all super strong all around it. It's just got to hold its position. 
Yeah. Dude, this is gonna this is gonna be a quality item. <laughs> Loads of flux in there. This is soldered on with extra easy, so hopefully I don't have any problems with that. If that fell off, that would be very annoying. Because that's one of the most difficult things to do on this job is get that hinge all correct. Lined up nicely. nice it feels great are you hearing hearing this oh that's so good um so what i'm going to do now is paper it up and i'm worried this video is going on too long so i'm gonna i won't bore you showing me doing all the papering but basically you've got buff sticks got my paper disc um just going over it i made this new buff stick this is like really coarse sandpaper If you've made one of these in silver and you're planning on polishing it nicely, good luck, get rid of all the fire scale. <laughs> you're gonna have to do a lot of papering and polishing to get rid of it. I'll just do the hinge. The mini whizzer, available in my online shop. Links in the description. <laughs> Okay, riveting. There's a bit of an art to this, and uh, unfortunately for you, and for me, I'm not very good at it, so I can't really give you good advice. Um, it's one of those jobs where I worked in London, like I did a kind of bad-ish job. I mean, I get the job done, but it never looks that nice. Other people do it quicker and it looks perfect. Uh, so it's something I did a little bit badly, and then just every time there was riveting to be done or something, uh, I just gave it to someone else to do. <laughs> so a bit like setting jobs. Riveting is not something I ever really practiced. But what I do is I'll tap it on the flat side, try and get a bit of a mushroom out, and then I will use that if I have to. Uh, good advice is to, rather than try and whack it a few times and get it to spread out, tap it loads of times. Spend five minutes, ten minutes, just going da 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 da. Really form the metal slowly. But there's a bit of an art to not start with too much, which is what I tend to always do. And ideally you want to end up with a nice little perfect sort of burnished dome over over the end of the hinge. Uh, I'll do a bit of one side, a bit of the other. So I've done it again, I think this is a bit long. Maybe I'll do a, a video specifically on this, partly for myself as well, so I can practice it. Bit that one, bit this one. But if you're not careful, they can lose their roundness as well in the end. You want it to look nice and round. They can go a bit egg shape. I wonder if I can rotate it, it might help me out a bit. something you should rush. And then, in an ideal world, that kind of mushroom bit kind of just puts a bit of pressure on the ends, so you don't want it rattling about, you want it squeezing just gently. But the hinge still has to work, still has to open without being all tight. You're not putting stress on your solder joints or the, or the metal.
it grips a little bit, it feels, it feels kind of classy the way it just opens up nice and smooth, a little bit resistance. That's what I'm aiming for. So I was just doing the editing, I didn't really end the video nicely, I wanted to explain a few extra things. So yeah, here's my lighter. Um, when you fold up the box, uh, the join, you can choose to have the hinge where the join is and it's at the back here, yeah, so I think it's kind of preferable to having it at the back rather than the front, just in case you have any marks so it shows up where you can see it's the join. Probably better idea to have it at the back rather than the front. Uh, when it's flat, you know Zippo lighters, yeah, they have writing at the bottom. I mean, you can, if you can do hand engraving, you can do it at this stage, but if not, you can buy these letter stamping kits. I've got some, that's why I'm sort of thinking I wish I used them now. Uh, while that's flat, you could stamp your own name or whatever you want in the bottom uh, before you fold it up, so it's kind of fun just to have your own identification on there. Uh, yes, what else was I going to say? Yes, when you, uh, if you are finishing yours nicely, getting it all polished, uh, definitely do m most of the work, pretty much all the work, before you rivet them together. Because it'd just be easier and you'll do a better job around the hinge and stuff if you've got them separate first. Get them polished, then join them up, rivet it, and then all it will need is a very light polish to get it perfect again. So definitely worth doing it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm about to finish mine a bit neater. Uh, I filled it up with fuel and then the fuel on my fingers left a sort of chalky white sort of finish on the metal. And that reminded me, this is silver. It's, it's a lighter, yeah, it's going to be in and out of people's hands, it's going to be greasy, it's going to get stained and tarnished. Uh, my one doesn't matter too much, this is like a workshop tool, yeah, I'm just going to be throwing it about on the workbench anyway, so I'm not too worried about mine. But if you are making one to sell, commission, you've got to finish it nicely and uh, almost definitely worth getting it plated somehow. Either white gold plated or silver plated, whatever you've got to do, uh, just to protect it from getting tarnished because it's going to be in people's hands. Some people's hands are greasy. Some people have got really ac acidic, kind of acid uh, sweat. So they mark metal. Um, an example is when you work with different jewelers, people's needle files stain different colors. Um, some people's are like go brown, some people's are dark gray, some people's are hardly changed. Mine go a bit grayish more than usual. I don't know, it's just acidity in, in your sweat. Um, what else? Yes, this is an old school thing. Yeah, it really speaks to me. I love the puff of smoke, like the fuel. Uh, it's just a mechanical thing, so like an invention. It just works it's, it's nice it's an event it's got soul it's got character it's not perfect like a new modern lighter it's gonna be far more fuel efficient it's gonna do a better job it's gonna be more wind resistant this is still better it's got soul uh an example of where i think people are spiritually missing this kind of thing in their lives smartphones yeah i mean this is an iphone 5 even this is an old-fashioned one but look at the size of it and the design actually it's a nice thing to hold and use uh taking a picture with these Take a picture of your smartphone, it goes, it makes a noise. It's fake, it doesn't need to make a noise at all. And it does it because it's a fake version of what cameras used to be like. This is an old Pentax P30, this is like 20, 25 years old. Um, yeah, you take a photo with it, I'll check this out. There's a winder, spring-loaded winder. I was actually doing something in the real world there, winding the film on, preparing it for the next photo. I'll, I'll take a photo of my um, <laughs> rolling mills here. I'll show the patrons it. But I've got to take a moment, yeah, to like be calm and relax, line up the composition, get the lighting right, get the focus right. And take a picture and I made a noise, I felt a vibration. I actually, something happened in the real world there. And uh, I can't see it now, I've got to be patient to, to see that. I've got to finish the film, then rewind it, take it out, uh, actually go out into the real world, take it to the shop, get it developed, speak to real people. It's a nice, a bit more lifestyle using old cameras. I think they're making a bit of a comeback lately. Uh, but they're nice. I recommend getting, in, getting into it. And uh, that's not free either. I've got to spend money to look at that photo. So I appreciate it more. I took my time more. Compare that to Instagram, just da -da 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 -da, taking pictures. And uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You just People just pollute the internet with all their crap. <laughs> um, I mean, even the photos on Instagram, yeah. All those filters, they're all fake versions of what these old school cameras used to do. Like, really. So it's all it's a soul, soulless crap or it's modern technology. That's why this kind of stuff speaks to me. You know, like I'm just old fashioned, like I've got an old fashioned job. It's ingrained into me. So just actually producing things by hand with hand tools. It really suits my character. So the Zippo lighters really speak to me in that way. I really enjoy them. I enjoy using them. I appreciate the, the feel. Uh, but yeah. 
that's it. So I hope this video was useful to you. I recommend you have a go at making them. Not too difficult, but as always, a lot of my stuff in the video, not necessarily very difficult, but you've got to work carefully, carefully and accurately and do a good job. Just take your time at every stage, get it right, and then the next stage is much easier. So yeah, just work in a way where you're not constantly correcting problems you just made. Uh, try and just get every stage correct and then you'll have an easier time and then hopefully arrive at the finished product with a good result. Yeah, thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe and all that and see you on the next one. Bye.